Hello my little lovelies and welcome back to a TV show and movie wrap up. I've decided to just combine it and put it all in one video this time round. So we're going to start off with the TV show wrap up and we're going to of course start with January and the first thing I watched in January was The Witcher Season 2. Um, I gave this one a four stars and it made much more sense in terms of the direction of the plot than Season 1 did um, but I was happily about to watch the next episode when I found out that that was it that was all it didn't even feel like the end of a season so i think i felt a little bit short changed because it just it ended so abruptly but i can't fault that i felt like i could follow along much more fluently than i could with season one next up i checked out you season two which i also gave a four stars Wow. <laughs> just when I thought nothing could top the crazy of the first season, season two got even more bonkers. Yet it still holds this sense of believability to it, personally. Um, I can really imagine people acting this type of way in like this obsessive love or lust, whatever you want to view it as. I love Love's character. <laughs> um, she always felt like being on the cusp of Unhinged, which I feel like she acted really well. Her and Joe slash Will complimented each other in the worst way possible this was addicting to get through even when i had a break between episodes i still binge watched the last lot in a day it was absolutely great after that i watched one that i wasn't really sure how i was going to feel about um and that was archive 81 which i ended up giving a four stars as well so keeping this as a january watch as i only watched the last two episodes on the very first few days of february so still going to categorize it as um january but anyway in this one, an archivist takes a job restoring damaged videotapes but finds themselves getting pulled into a mystery involving the missing director and a mysterious cult they were documenting. This was hallucinatory. The atmosphere building and lulling really amplified the texture of the show. There was this sound or music or just noise that was always present in some type of way and it just felt so eerie and uncomfortable. It really felt like it was getting under your skin. This was so layered and complex in terms of the plot. I like how awkward and real Dan, who's our main character, was. He accurately showed someone trying to keep it together, accepting the crazier things while still not knowing if he was going insane and being just made on the cusp of a breakdown. It also really made me think of the music video for Bastille Fall Upon Your Knees as well. Um, I think just the tone of the just the tone of the show kind of aligned with the music video of that. And it also reminded me very loosely of the concept of the horror movie franchise called VHS. It left me super confused and I never really fully understood what was going on, but I liked it. It kept me interested and on edge in the best way. I'm sort of mad about the final scenes though, because it seems like we will have to wait a few years for a follow up season. Next in February, I only watched one show and that was The Silent Sea, which I gave a three stars. So this is following a space crew as they go up to the moon to source water for an earth that's struggling to produce its own. Ah, this was really interesting until the last episode where it just got a bit strange and then just ended. The character development was interesting, as was the science element, but the direction of the storyline just kind of seemed to, I don't know, be all over the place and then fizzle out into something that I wasn't anticipating and not in a good way. So I'd say I'd still recommend it, but going knowing that the ending is going to be possibly disappointing. Now, in March, I watched Love is Blind Season 2, which I gave a five stars. I absolutely adore this show. Um, it was so beautiful, and I'm glad that people found and chose themselves as well as those that walked away together and got married. Natalie was so dignified in the reunion. I don't even remember them doing this for Season 1, but I hope they come back and do a check-in to see who stayed together like later on, later on down the line um, for Season 2, um, who came back together, etc., like last time. Finishing up the TV shows with American Horror Story, I watched season 10, which was double feature, and I gave this a four stars. I'm going to admit, I was confused about the whole double feature thing. I felt like information wasn't super easy to find, but then I think it's also because I was worried that I'd end up spoiling myself. Um, but once I did figure out what it meant, I thought it was pretty cool. I love the idea of two seasons in one, and them being so very different to each other as well. It's pretty impressive. 
So Red Tide was part one of season 10 and it was spanning from episode one to six and this was so entertaining. I love a good or a bad vampire story and the whole concept of this pill that makes you great was fascinating and explored fantastically. I think I enjoyed these episodes over the second part of the double feature a little bit more. Um, it wasn't super gory or scary but it was atmospheric and very enjoyable. Death Valley was the second half of season 10 and it starts off as, good, as a good old fashioned black and white alien story. Personally, I'm not one for a horror flick, although I do enjoy those kooky conspiracy documentaries. So I think you can see why I enjoyed the first half of the double feature more than this one. But both mini series felt like they ended abruptly, um, and I would have liked a more polished off finish. Regardless of this, quite an enjoyable season. And then finishing that up with American Horror Stories stories. <laughs> <laughs> which I gave the five stars. And this one was a weekly anthology story featuring a different horror story each week. Um, I think it had maybe like eight episodes in it. Uh, this was a great collection of short stories. There was a really timely episode about a YouTube like house, you know, where they do like the fraternity houses or like the hype house, all those sort of things, um, filming things they really shouldn't for the views. I loved how we had a bit of everything. There was vampires, aliens, witchcraft, urban legends, ghosts, zombies. Every episode was different and there was something for everyone. The last episode hit differently. I really loved how much involvement of the murder house was included because being the first season, it was nostalgic to come back to where it all started. So that's it for the TV shows. Shall we get cracking into the movies? So going back again to January, the first movie I watched was 1984, which I gave a three stars. So I finally found a copy of this in CEX after reading the novel last year. Um, this was an interesting viewing, I guess you could say. I think it might be hard to appreciate if you didn't have the full context of the book, um, as it stayed pretty true to what the novel had to say, I would, I would say, on the surface at least. But for a viewing, it was kind of boring like it wasn't really entertaining i can't say i enjoyed watching it but it kept the basic topics of erasing history thought crime rebellion focusing a bit too much on the actual love affair aspect and not what it really represented um it just didn't make for an entertaining watch i've got to say this makes it difficult to review I like what it was saying, the tone of it was perfect, but I have to say that I prefer how the book got the point across, especially with the detail of the language and the themes that the movie just, just couldn't capture, I found personally. Next, I watched Don't Look Up, which I gave 3.5 stars, and this felt like a social experiment and also gave me Quentin Tarantino vibes. I feel like people would actually act a lot like this if we were threatened of an extinction level crisis like this, because, because look at how we all carry on with global warming. It actually does make me panic. It was very awkward. It was such a weird, dark comedy. It definitely put me on edge and made me think, um, and made me think about things deeper whilst being funny and a bit quirky. Definitely not what I was expecting, though. After that, another 3.5 rating, I watched Apocalypto. This is definitely a culture shock, I guess you could say, but more as in my partner said, let's watch, and then I was faced with blood and gore, but yeah, it's pretty fascinating. I know nothing about this time period of the Mayan civilization, so I don't really know how accurately, historically correct it was, but it was gripping, um, even given that the majority of the time I wouldn't say I was enjoying it, but by the end I saw a lot of value in this viewing. Oh, this guys is gonna be a very disappointing one. It is Eternals, um, the Marvel film. I gave this a two star. It's very shiny Power Rangers, basically. I was super disappointed in this. Yes, it was lots of fun, but it's really just money thrown at getting big actors to overshadow the fact that the story is very luckluster. I think the only reason they went with Greek gods' names was so Icarus could have his moment in the sun, and it wasn't really worth the wait. The end credit just made it worse unfortunately super disappointed one of my least favorite marvel films by far to make me feel a little bit better though i ended up seeing Encanto, and i loved this one i gave it a five stars it was such a feel good film i absolutely loved it so much the music the color the family dynamics it was beautifully created with a lot of heart and morals to the story it really nailed the high feelings and then hit you harder with the downer scene right after yeah it was a great movie experience after that, I checked out Tick, Tick, Boom, which I gave five stars. And this was a surprising delight. It's about the struggle to the big break of Jonathan, later creator of um, the movie Rent, and shows the effects of the HIV crisis, a struggling artist, um, and complicated relationships. There was this constant pressure that Jonathan had on himself to achieve some sort of 
acclaim before it was too late. This was a fantastic musical. It felt so, I felt so much emotion, was literally on the edge of my seat, nodding along. It was a fantastic experience. I always feel like it was done a, a disservice not having a full blown premiere at the cinema and being a straight to Netflix movie because I feel like this would have sold out. There was a great display of diversity in this and in a nice casual way where it wasn't the startling like difference that had to be discussed. It just felt natural. The whole atmosphere for the film felt authentic. I even loved the mini movie style music video portions <laughs> and early home movie blog footage. It was amazing. After that, I had a rewatch and this was Pick Up Boy, which I gave a four stars. So this film popped into my head one night when I was trying to sleep and I had to find it. I remember watching it on the CBBC when I was little and I found it on YouTube. And although it wasn't a very clear copy, it was still watchable. Pick Up Boy is based on Mallory Blackburn's book about a young teen who has a heart condition but is unsuccessful in finding a suitable donor. The constant stress is depressing him as it impacts his life entirely, especially in his ability to swim competitively and of course it begins to cause arguments between his parents as they begin to disagree on what's the best route to continue on they begin to go with the idea of trying experimental surgery with a pig's heart and there are some brief but interesting conversations on animal cruelty the pacing was a bit off and you could tell it had that serialized feel for a straight to telly showing but it was such a good movie it felt nostalgic but also like i was watching it for the very first time because i didn't remember much of the story but it also felt so familiar his family had so much going on and i feel like cam was pushed into some choices regarding his health but also understandably um so because he was only 13 um he was dealing with so much as a young team with betrayal of his closest friends on top of the very new type of surgery he was to be the first first child candidate for it was a lot um this was so heartwarming though the acting i mean yeah it was basic but i don't think it took away from the heart excuse the pun of this story i really really enjoyed revisiting this one then in February, I watched The Tinder Swindler, which I gave a 3.5 stars. This was a fascinating but also deeply unsatisfying um, documentary as justice was just not served. Um, I do think that after a while, you would think some something strange is happening with this guy who isn't around and asking for all this money, but maybe that's just the cynicus, cynicism, cynicism in me, or however you say it. I feel for these people who swindled him, and I'm gutted he didn't get full comeuppance. I liked how this was documented, though. It was a great merging of the different narratives of these women that were affected by this dude. After that, I watched Dawn of the Dead, which I gave a three star. This was a cringy, fun zombie movie, which I began to enjoy way more by the end. I wouldn't watch it again, though, personally. And lastly, for February, I watched Jojo the Rabbit, which I gave a 3.5 stars. This was such a good film. The satire was well placed and Jojo was such a lovable character despite his obsession with the Nazi regime. But watching him as he gained an awareness and woke up um, to what was actually happening was amazing. This hits you in the feels as well as being funny and it had an excellent car. And then in March, I started that month off with The House, which I gave a four stars. It's basically a trio of short stories focusing on a strange house and it's even stranger inhabitants. The second story gave me Coraline, Coraline vibes um it was very macabre strange confusing but i really quite enjoyed it i don't really have much of a takeaway though it just it was an interesting um little story next up i saw a new release at the movies and that was the batman which i gave a four stars i have a review for this and morbius um so i won't give you my opinions yet so look out for that video if you want to know my thoughts and feelings but after that i watched turning red which i gave a five stars oh my gosh this was so good it made me think of so many things of course the Obvious major anime inspiration, as well as the more current We Bear Bears, Steven Universe, Gravity Falls, Inside Out, and Big Mouth, to name but a few. Those are all the things that were kind of popping up in my head. But it also was its own, obviously. This was just amazing. Instantly, I thought Miriam would be the girl equivalent of my boyfriend. <laughs> she even had a dang skateboard. And Priya was most definitely me. The ultimate representation of fangirl culture, especially early 2000s boy band fandoms. And it had me hysterically giggling and feeling entirely relatable but deeper than that it showed the growing pains of being a young girl with your body changing and struggling with being your true authentic self but not wanting to let down the high esteem your family holds for you i feel like a lot of kids will relate to this it was a masterpiece honestly visually it did so much amazingly musically fantastic story arc Mwah, chef's kiss bloody stellar film there's a lot more deeper reviews discussing things like intergenerational trauma which are well worth the read or watch if you find any videos for it 
But in short, I love the diversity in this. I love what it had to say and I felt like it was real life. After that, I checked out Unbreakable, which I gave a 4.5 stars. I've been wanting to get into this trilogy for ages. I'm so glad that I enjoyed it. It takes a realistic approach to superheroes and does it so well, I think. Um, it's a great story and I was definitely looking forward to watching Split. Um, so I immediately <laughs> went and watched that as my next movie and that I gave it five stars. This was fantastic. I think the exploration of DID from the perspective of someone who does not have it, which obviously is myself, was absolutely fascinating. I can understand why people People that have it would feel offended as it does have this extreme side of it that is obviously portrayed as an evil character as a villain however for plot wise and story alone I, I thought it was great and I think that James McAvoy did an amazing job at switching between these multiple personas Anna Taylor-Joy really carried the story too um, as a thriller it had me on the edge of my seat throughout Again, I understand how it is seen as insensitive, but purely as a movie, I think it was rather amazing. The ending was rather too on the nose, though. And then lastly, to finish up that trilogy and to finish up this video, I checked out Glass, which I gave a five stars as well. What an amazing end to the trilogy. It discusses some interesting points on what a superhero is, and the bridge to reality is done really well. As a blockbuster, it was thoroughly entertaining and wraps up the series excellently. So that's it. Those are all the TV shows and movies I watched during January, February and March of this year. Let me know if you guys have watched any of these yourselves, what your own reviews and thoughts and feelings are on the matter and yeah i shall speak to you in another video soon bye